Greetings hobbyists, this is R. Sands of Vool. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at an alternative to rigging that will help you pose your hard surface models. So this is a feature in machine tools and it allows you to do some really cool tricks. So I've got this set up here. And for example, I can just start posing this leg really easily, vastly in my opinions, more easily than you can do with a normal rig. And you can just change your mind and move things around as you want using these little gizmos. I think this is absolutely brilliant. So let's have a look at how you do this. So I've got this mechanical leg that I want to pose and we're gonna actually use a feature that is in Machine Tools. Now Machine Tools is free if you go to Gumroad, but there is a version of this called the Deus Ex version, which is paid for. And that adds an additional feature to this that I think is quite nice. So we'll talk about the free bits that you get and then we'll talk about the bit that you need Deus Ex to add to it. I'm gonna be honest, I bought the Deus Ex version of this just because I wanted to give machines some money because I use machine tools so much. And then I discovered this feature and was even happier that I'd bought the Deus Ex version. So just something to consider. Again, there's a link for that in the description. So what you need to do is edit preferences, go to your add-ons and find machine tools. And when you've got that, make sure that your group tool is on. Other than that, you don't really need to fiddle around with any of these settings that you can do if you want to. For example, you can add in prefixes and suffixes and things like that. But I haven't bothered with any of that for this. Then when you press the end panel and you find machine tools, you will have your standard helper, but you also have the group version. Now you'll see that mine says Deus Ex because I've got the Deus Ex version. But at this point, this is all what comes with the free version of this. So we're gonna talk about how this works, but effectively this helps by ordering your collection by using empties, which is just nice by itself. It makes things really easy to find, but at the same time, it gives you more options for adding a almost pseudo rig for this because you're parenting lots of things to empties. So let's start by doing the basic thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these. You Notice know, so I've selected everything that I want to be part of this leg, and then I'm gonna hit the group button. Now this creates you'll notice up here, let's just expand this out. This is added in an empty, it's quite a small empty, it's just there at the, this point, and then it's got all of the items within that. So it's now made my collection a lot neater, just straight off the bat, which is great. And then we've got everything that's been piled into and linked to this single empty. Now, if you click off, that empty disappears, which we'll come to. But if I then hold down shift and double click on any part of the group, so it doesn't matter which bit it is, it will automatically select everything that's in that group and then highlight that empty. So I've got that as blue, which is my active object. Yours will probably be a different color. I just set this up so it's clear on YouTube. Now, what will happen is that will automatically set the empty to the average of these points, which in this instance, I don't want. I want to be able to rotate this around this single object. Now I will point out, so let's just double click on this. If I click rotate, it's rotating it around there empty, but you can still click individual objects. For example, I've just realized this isn't in the correct place. So I'm just gonna G and Z that up to let's say there, which is where I want it. And then I can double click and then R and that's still gonna function from that new position. So you can still move things around individually. For example, I might decide that I want to rotate this round and then work from there. So you've still got a lot of control over your individual parts, but let's shift and double click. Let's actually go to cast and turn on my screencast key so you can see what I'm doing. But if I want to move this, which is the empty that's been named group 001 group, then I can just come to the adjust button here. And now I can G and move this around without affecting everything else. Whereas if I don't have this selected and I start moving this around, it moves everything. So I'm just gonna go to adjust shift click on this which has its center point where I want the rotation to occur, alt and A to align it, and then I'm actually just going to select back on that, and I'm gonna S to scale this up so it's easier to see, because I wanna be able to see this empty, it's quite important. Then I just disable this when I'm done, and then that empty automatically hides until I double click while holding shift and it's back. Now if you do want to always see these empties, you can just click this where it says hide empties, you can turn that off from being true, and now your empty will be there and you'll notice it's automatically set. You can always see it through everything underneath. If you don't like that, again, you can click on that empty, come to your object properties and then viewport display. And at the moment it's in front, you can set it so it's not, but I would always keep that there if I was you. So at the moment I can just click on this and then I can rotate or move it around that empty. Great, but I also want to have another joint that moves well for this bit and so on. So how do I set that up? 
Well, this is actually really, really easy, which is why I like this. So say I want all of these three to then move around this point. So let's click, click. And actually I'm gonna do something and intentionally forget to click that one. So let's click, click, and I can either come to group here or I can press control and G and that's going to group that. And you can see this empty has been created here. And nicely, this empty, if I come to my overall group, is now inside this subgroup. So I've got now this and this bit attached to that group. And once again, even though this isn't part of that group, I can come to this, let's shift double click. So I want to adjust my origin, shift click on that, Alt A, and now it's gonna be here. And once again, I'm gonna scale that up so it's a bit bigger, somewhere around there. Stop orienting that, and now I can R with this, and then select that one and R, but oh no, I forgot to add this to it. Well, actually, that's really easy. All you do is select this, shift select that, and then add to group, and now this has all been reordered, so you'll now notice that my group two now includes all three of these objects, so you can just do that and change things as you want. And then finally, I do want this to have its own separate bit by itself, so I want it to have its own empty, so once again, I'm going to Control and G and put that into its own group. So we've now got a group within this group that's within the other group. So really like the way this sort of clearly shows everything moving down and where it is. And then Shift double click. And once again, I want to adjust my group gizmo. That's S to scale that up. I'm gonna Shift click on that, Alt and A, and actually maybe let's make that a little bit bigger and then stop adjusting it. So there we go. Awesome, we're pretty much set up. Now some other things that I'll point out, I'm only gonna really talk about this one, is that recursive is already set on true. What that means is that if I select, let's say this, it now selects everything underneath it, or shift, double click, and selects everything underneath it. If I turn recursive off, it will only select that section of the group that's immediately connected to it. So notice it is selecting this empty, so it will still rotate everything, but it shows what's part of this group, and then that one shows what's part of this group, and then that one shows what's part of this group. So this will still work that way. It's just a matter of preference, I think. I quite like to have the recursive set on, so as soon as I click this, I see everything that's part of the leg, but that really is a personal preference. Likewise, I typically have the hide empties on for most of this, but if you have them off and double click, they reappear. So that works perfectly well, and this is what you get as part of standard machine tools, and it's free, and it comes with a million other little tools, like my Pi menu that allows me to move from different modes to different modes easily, and that align function that I was using to move the empties to the object I wanted them to pivot around. Honestly, just go out and get it. But as I say, do consider getting the Deus Ex version for this bit. If I click Show Group Gizmos, and then select one of the empties, we get this option here. And this allows us to set things up really nicely. Now, before you do that, I would recommend you get to a standard pose that you want. So I'm just gonna rotate that a little bit and I'm gonna call this my standard pose. Then I'm gonna go to each of my empties. So click adjust, control and A and apply the rotation. Then this one, control and A and apply the rotation. This one, control and A and apply the rotation and then turn that off. What that's gonna mean is now when I come to this, everything is set to zero, which means when I toggle my gizmo, you'll see we get, well, this, a really big gizmo that at the moment is on the X axis. Now this is why I like to set my rotations because otherwise this will not be perfectly on the X axis in my resting pose. And this, if I click on it, will allow me to rotate it round. Now, firstly, I don't want this rotating on the X. I want this to rotate on the Y and the Z. So I want to be able to move this here and then move it there just using this, let's undo those for now. I also think that this is, well, massive, so if you come here, you can change the size of them to something that's probably a little bit more convenient. So for me, that is about a convenient size. And you'll notice if I click the hide empties, these gizmos remain, but you can always click show gizmos on and off. I mean, this is pretty cool, really easy to set up, Definitely easier to set up and try to get everything in place than dealing with a rig, but then you don't have the inverse kinematics you can do with a rig. It just depends what you like. So let's just do the same with this one. Let's unhide that empty. I want this one as well to have a gizmo. I don't want it on the X, I just want it on the Y. And again, I want that to be about that big. And then same for this one. I want this to have a gizmo on the Y and let's shrink that down. So now I can hide those empties. 
and be able to move everything around. Now there are a couple of other tricks with this. So I'm actually gonna bring back those empties again. And I'm gonna click on this one. And I want this to be my standard pose, or at least where it resets to if I've decided that I've got an issue. So I'm just gonna click set, and then I'm gonna come to this one and also click set. You'll notice that there's this dot here, which means it's already there. So I didn't actually need to do this because of when I set it up, but this is the process you click set. Let's just say I don't want this here. I want it there. You'll notice that the dot is now off. If I click set, now it's back. This is now the pose that it resets to. So actually I'm gonna go back to there where it was. In fact, let's go with there, adjust that, control and A, apply the rotation, turn that off and then set that. So what this means is that now I can, let's say move this, and then move that to there, and then move that one to there, and then move that one to there. And if I click on, let's say, just this one and click recall, it will go back to its automatic position. Or I can click on that one and recall that to its original position. Or I can recall this one to its original position. Or if I just mess around with this again, and let's just put that one to a really extreme rotation and that one to a really extreme rotation so we can see that we're doing it. If I click off, so nothing is selected and click recall, all of them reset to their original position. So this means you've got a really quick way of moving these around. And for me, the setup's faster than rigging. And I do think that this visual representation of these areas and how you're gonna rotate them around is really cool. Now, let's just talk about one problem and then how to solve it. And that is that if I, let's say, use this to rotate it round, and then I rotate on this side, you'll notice that now this is at an odd angle. I don't want this to rotate or have been turned to this point because now it's gonna rotate in a way that I didn't want it. I only want this, so the one that's rotating on the Z axis, to be in relation to effectively the global rotation. So how are we gonna fix that? Well, actually it's quite easy. What I'm gonna do is click on this, so I've now got everything selected, and I'm gonna take off the Z axis. Now what I'm gonna do, let's just close these up, so we've got group one there. What I'm actually gonna do is create an entirely new group. So this is actually called group four with group one inside it. I'm actually gonna rename this. So let's just click F2 and I'm gonna call this leg group. Let's get rid of that group four. Okay, and now we have got an empty, which is tiny. You can see the group four empty there. And then if I click here, that's the empty, so we've got an empty, and then this empty only has the whole rest of the group inside it. But this has added a layer now that if I use this group empty and its gizmo and put that just on the Z, let's expand that in size to about there. What that means is that now, if I move this and then rotate it on the other one, it's not gonna affect or have affected that empty because the leg group empty that's here, the smaller one, is not being affected by the empties that are below it. So that now means this will stay in that position that I want it to be in. So this now means that I've got full range of motion that I want for this leg, and each time I can still move it with that one, being basically on the global axis. So a really nice way of being able to rig your mechanical objects. As I say, it doesn't have inverse kinematics on it, so this has got some negatives to it, but it's really quick to set up. The user interface is really nice and intuitive. It makes everything really clear to see. I really quite like this. It also shows you the degrees that you're moving on and from each time. So that's really cool if you want to do some specific movements. So what do you think of this? Is this something you'd use? I imagine for people that are interested in this for 3D printing, this might be fairly handy for you. Maybe not so much for animation, Though I will say you can still keyframe everything off of this, so you don't have to use a rig and those visual cues from the gizmos are pretty nice. So let me know in the comments what you think. As always, if you found that useful, please do hit the like button. So if there's other people out there that might find this useful, they're more likely to see it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you're interested in supporting the channel more, there is a channel Patreon page where you get these videos ahead of time, ad free, and you get other cool perks as well. For example, the channel exclusive Discord, which has some fantastic people on it helping each other out if you've got any projects on the go. Have a great day, guys.